Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we celebrate a hundred videos of uh, mainframe related uh, subjects such as uh, MBS, VM370, DOS VS, ZOS, ZPM and, and many other interesting subjects such as the Cray 1 and even VAX and uh, VMS subjects. So to celebrate this uh, very special uh, achievement, uh, two years of uh, videos, I thought we'll make this a very special edition today by having fun and uh, being playful and uh, enjoy what we've uh, accomplished together as a community in the, over the last two years. So to celebrate this very special M100 anniversary video of the Moshix mainframe channel, I'll be actually giving away a IBM S370 mainframe, uh, just like the one you see in the picture here on your screens. I think that's, I believe that's a model 148. I'll be giving away one of this. I only have one available to the person or to the group of people who can answer two questions about the mainframe subjects. One relates to knowledge about certain things that we've already discussed in this channel and the other one relates to programming understanding. The people who will answer first or the person who will answer first will receive this amazing IBM S370 mainframe from me and I'll be sending it to you as well. So no cost, whatever involved, uh, will, you'll, you'll be receiving this mainframe to your doorstep. No, not that one, not a five-ton computer. I'm going to send you this one. I'm going to be sending you this amazing working IBM S370 mainframe in a tiny little box. In fact, it's a, it's a Raspberry and I have Hercules installed in it, there's Linux installed in it and, uh, and I have MBS on it and I think VM372 and to the winner who can answer the following two questions which are upcoming pay very close attention, you'll be winning this amazing mainframe sent to your doorstep if you send me the address and then again to the first person answering both questions correctly and they need to be answered just correct i don't take partial answers and again the answers can be found in all the videos that are contained already in this moshix mainframe channel you only need to look in the previous 99 videos to find the answer to these questions so here comes question number one as you can see here on your screen this is part of a chess to uh, output, uh, so that's the output that the job scheduler within MBS prints out whenever you start a job and it comes and, and makes a few steps forwards and then hopefully comes to a conclusion, it will print something like this. In this case, uh, this is a job that concluded and, um, and uh, it, uh, this job shows you some of the uh, temporary data sets that were used by Jess to, to bring this job to conclusion. What I want to know, so the first question is, what operating system is this? What operating system is on it printed out this uh, this this JS2 printout? And uh, it's a very specific version of an operating system. I want to know which one it is. And uh, again, all the answers can be found in the all the previous 99 videos of this channel. Uh, the question, the answer has to be sent in by uh, by a comment. To the, on the bottom of this channel and I don't want separate answers the, the two answers have to be put in at the same time in the same comment and whoever answers first will be there for the public to see and so there's not going to be any question who answered first and it's going to get that IBM S370 mainframe in a Raspberry so that's the first question and uh, answer me exactly which version of operating system uh, created this, this output the second video is going to be a little bit more difficult to answer because it involves watching me create a program in assembler and then you have to try to find something the key to this uh, to answering this um, the, the second question is understanding the assembler instruction on the mainframe called um, the translate instruction and so you'll be able to research this just as I'm doing now on Google there's going to be plenty of uh, of ways to to find answers to this question. As you can see here, it involves an assembler program that I'm gonna write just now, uh, just as soon as we finish explaining what the instruction does. I'm gonna be creating a, an assembler program from scratch and you will watch me program. I'll be just be playing it back a little bit accelerated so that uh, it's not gonna be boring, but um, it's gonna, everything is gonna be around this instruction. As you can see here, what it says here, there's many 
resources on the web you can find, but this instruction provides different techniques for using the storage to storage format of the translate instruction. The assembly program, um, what it says here, um, the bytes of storage as specified by operand 1 are replaced by the byte located at the calculated address within operand 2. So the, the, the bytes in storage described here are going to be replaced by this uh, by bytes stored here and so you'll find plenty of examples here how this all works and here's the instruction and um, this is for instance a popular way to uh, to convert strings into ARPA case you need to give it a table in storage which will act the 256 bytes table in storage which will act as the translation table and I'm going to be writing a program that prints out something but it's going to be translated into something else. If you tell me what is going to be, what this program is going to be printing out exactly, the whole string, um, then if you also answer this question about this printout here, then uh, you'll have uh, you will have both answers correct. You need to answer both correctly. So let me get into it and play you the uh, the programming, the playback, the video as I program the second program relating to the second question. And, uh, and then you can guess. Uh, by the way, I take no responsibility whatsoever for mistakes in my videos. And, um, and uh, you cannot outsmart the system. You just have to know. You have to study the subject a little bit. So let's make this fun and let's switch over to the video at the accelerated pace.
Okay, as we return again to normal playback uh, speed, as you can see here, uh, the program, I'll explain real quick what it does. Uh, I enable here printing of all and expansion of all macros. Um, not that we use that many macros, we use uh, just a couple of here, three or four of those, but you can also put it off and then uh, you, don't, you don't have to, in the compilation, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, then we have started the program, we save the registers, we set up uh, the base register, as you know, uh, for those people joining late into the Motion Mainframe channel, all addressing in uh, in the mainframe architecture is relative. Uh, it's a base register plus displacement. So R12 register 12 is going to be my displacement. I copy here the registers from, uh, from my copy book, so I don't have to go and create uh, equates for my registers. Then uh, I... I um, I uh, built a save chain so that, uh, because as you know, every program calling another program needs needs to uh, min, uh, make sure that there's a chain of save areas where the registers are being saved. That's the convention. And then uh, we open an output file, which could be either file or sequential file, as uh, described here, or it could be in the JCL. You could also send it directly to a printer or just to uh, to held output if you want to look at it there. And then. Um, then we unpack this um, this uh, uh, variable because, as you can see here, this is 12, and this is only six, so um, length, right? And so that's uh, um, I could actually explain it here. M100 is six bytes. PM100 is 12. Okay, so then uh, here's the interesting uh, instruction that we looked at before. And again, you need to study. It's not really that hard. It uses a translation table, which we're building here. Okay, that's a translation table that it requires. And, um, and then we put the output here into um, the, the part of out area. So that the whole thing here is the output buffer or the output structure, as I call it here. Um, and then within that structure, we have a part that contains the output, the translation. And so we translate using this translate table into this sub variable of this structure. And then when we say put, uh, here's a macro right now, uh, we put it into the out area. It will put this whole thing in it, including the result of the translation. So what I need to focus on here is how this, and you obviously you should maybe have a look at the uh, Epsidic table, uh, just as a little helper here. I'm sure that some people, uh, I, I can think right now off the top of my head of about 15, 20 people in the Moshix mainframe channel, uh, some of the community members who can who can do this uh, very, very quickly. But with a little bit of study, you should be able, if you're one of the first viewers of this video, uh, because I think it's really just down to who, who starts viewing this channel, this, this, this video first, and then look it up uh, online, you'll be able to translate this in no time. So we translate this using this translation table, okay? And um, we put the result in here, and then we put it into the file, then we close the file, this file here, um, this output there, this output DCP, and then uh, we restore the registers. Uh, first we lo load the, the previous save area, save area address, then restore registers, and exit with return code zero. And then I guess we can delete this and this. And that's it. And then we have literal, uh, uh, the literal uh, part of the, of the program, the save area. We always want to have the save area as close as possible to the end of the program. So you never run out of, uh, of, uh, out of 4,096 bytes. And the DCB here, of course, is used for the, oops, for the opening and closing of the file. Uh, this is the output buffer and then uh, this is the original string and then it's going to get translated with this and it's really not that difficult i'll give you one additional hint it's it's going to translate into two words uh, that everybody likes and so that's it um so 
if you can guess what this uh, what the string the output string is going to be like correctly and also guess what operating system version we uh, mentioned in the first part uh, of the of the quiz here then uh, you'll win my amazing mainframe and i'll send it to you free of charge so having done all this i think the only, the only thing that's left for us is to um, use this uh, this 100 year one well, sorry 100 video anniversary um, to thank some of the community people who make everything possible that we do here in the Moshix mainframe channel some of the people who write the emulators some of the people who make uh, these operating systems work well on top of the emulators uh, people who contribute software for us or backport software from the future back into 40 year olds or 45 year olds opera year old operating systems so i want to thank all those people and that's uh, what i think uh, is the final part of this video so i have compiled but by the way i'm not going to go and compile this because I, I think i don't see any major uh, errors but if there are any they should be minor but this should run um, so i'm not going to go through the exercise if you, i'll make this available um, in a link to this program in the description below this video so you can go and uh, play with it yourself uh, but only once we well actually no i'll only put it up once uh, we got the results um, to uh, the, the, the correct answers because uh, once we after that i'll put this program up so that people can uh, assemble it on their systems and uh, and play with it. this will assemble both on mbs as well as on uh, zos uh, so i'll make this available a link in the description the link will first lead to an empty program as soon as we have the first uh, correct answers uh, to both questions then i will put it up uh, the content in that empty file so i also made uh, to get back to do to the people we want to thank in the community i created a little uh, little text file with uh, people that i personally want to thank and that i think we should all thank so um, i organized this by subject in no particular order of course, um, the Hercules developers who make this all possible. And by the way, folks, I may have, I'm may i sure I forget a ton of people, and I'm very sorry if I don't mention you here. If uh, if you can spot any people that should be thanked and are not mentioned here, then I would ask you to p please uh, put up their names in uh, comments below this video. So, of course, Fish, um, uh, Trout, Mr. Trout up in Seattle, who is uh, the main developer and project manager for the Hercules uh, uh, emulator that we all use. Ivan Warren, I would say, is probably the the most uh, active person uh, along with Fish in uh, in the Hercules development. He's just fixed uh, major bugs that would allow things like ZVM to run on Hercules. Uh, so thank you, Ivan. Uh, Peter Jensen, who is the person, very nice gentleman, who uh, created the, the made the channel to channel adapter code work so that we could uh, essentially have uh, a an MVS cluster or even Jest 3 work properly and uh, or ZVM SSI clusters so uh, all that code comes from Peter Jansen and uh, I think he's out in Switzerland so thank you Peter Steve Orso who was also one of the contributors to the Hercules uh, code but is also a contributor to the DOS VSE um, he has a distribution of DOS VSE. Uh, Jürgen Wentelmann, of course, uh, we, who is the project manager for the TK4 distribution of MBS 3.8. Um, and uh, other than that, he also contributes a lot to the Hercules code itself. He also has his own distribution of Hercules, which he includes as part of MBS 3.8 TK4. Um, and then, of course, Roger Bowler, um, who was the original um, developer of Hercules who started this project nearly 20 years ago, John Maynard, who was uh, took over from him for a, a good time. Very interesting gentleman. He's also known as that the person who wears this uh, Tron, Mr. Tron, I think is his name. He was on TV. A very very interesting person. Uh, this this is also Mr. Hartman is also a contributor to Hercules, and of course Post Special who who does all kind of stuff. I mean he's for instance, a disassembler, I made a video about a disassembler he wrote for MBS. Uh, he writes all kinds of interesting code. He created a replacement for the a dump utility that comes with ZOS, the ADR, the S ADR SSU, and he calls it DS Dump. Um, it's a dumping program, very useful for backups. So he wrote that one and many other things. So then uh, MBS 3.8, of course, Jurgen, uh, out in Switzerland also, I think, at the ETH University 
who um, took over TK3 from Volker Bandke. Uh, his name should be here somewhere. Yep. Yeah. And uh, created TK4 minus and with vast improvements. Amazing engineering. Greg Price, who wrote the RFE editor as well as the uh, IMON uh, monitor that I use very often. Shelby Beach, who's done uh, amazing work with the debugger for assembler and other imp important improvements such as uh, S370 instructions and S390 instructions that are added that were added to the XF assembler. Uh, and then these people, the TCPIP code that we use for the FTP is by Jim Morrison, Mike Rayburn, contributed the end file, which is so important. Uh, this gentleman, I don't really know his real name, but uh, he's, he's all over the place. And then Mr. Noel, who, um, who wrote Kicks and uh, has a very particular way of uh, protecting uh, his copyright, which of course he has a right to, but uh, he's shutting down his website, so I, I hope he will still make this amazing program available so we can have Kicks or a, a compatible code running on MVS. And then documentation, which is so important in the mainframe world. Uh, IBM, which has has been writing amazing documentation since the dawn of uh, computing until very recently, maybe in the last 10 years or so, the quality of documentation has come down a lot because the Red Books are not a replacement for correct documentation. But um, the 50 years prior to that, IBM pr produced the best documentation for any complex system you can imagine. Sam Golub, a very, very nice gentleman with whom I uh, speak often. He uh, is the editor of the CBT tape, which is uh, nowadays it's really just an emulated tape with many hundreds of utilities uh, that come very, very handy in the mainframe world. Jay Mosley, who has this amazing doc, uh, website will, where he teaches how to sysgen and MBS and then includes all kind of uh, compilers and, and I mean, it's the one reference everybody should use if you do serious mainframe work. Volker Bandke, who did the first distribution, the TK3. Uh, Al Caso, who is the creator of Beat Savers, uh, where documentation from uh, all documentation can be stored and found. Amazing, uh, very important work. He's doing God's work there. Um, um, and uh, Tommy Sprinkle is also has, and he has done a lot of work on documenting MVS. On the VM374, we have Bob O'Hara, who's uh, been um, very active in the six-pack. David Wade, uh, who is the six-pack um, maintainer. Uh, Professor Henri Fernand, who's done so much in, uh, in explaining things there and making things work. And then Lee, a um, uh, person out in, uh, in Japan, who's doing very, very important, very interesting work in uh, networking VM370s over either channel-to-channel -channel adapter or, or dial-up modems. Um, and of course, uh, equally important or, um, is the, contribute, the contribution by Mr. Haynes uh, on uh, full-screen tools for VM370, because VM370, the version that we have in the open source, did not contain full-screen tools such as VMSP did later on. Then for non-IBM work, uh, Samsung in Finland, a friend of mine who is uh, very well-versed on open VMS and uh, helped me to bring up a cluster, which I made a video of. Andreas Tantos, who wrote an amazing emulator for the Cray machine, of which I also made a video um, on how to get Cray OS up and running. This gentleman is just a genius. And then DOS, VSE, and get back again in the IBM world. He's uh, a package maintainer, such as uh, Volker for TK4 and Jurgen for TK4, uh, Volker for TK3 and Jurgen for TK4. And uh, this person has also contributed a lot, Mr. Beaulieu. And um, then we have the compilers, quite a few people. Gerhard, of course, again. Um, and then Shelby Beach, who's been Beach, who's been contributing a lot to the uh, uh, assembler that we have in MBS, Jurgen as well. And then uh, this, this people, Mr. Campbell, as well as uh, the Dignus System uh, Corporation, have contributed uh, a basic um, uh, interpreter. Mr. Sylvester is the Simula compiler, Mr. Skomsky, the assembler G uh, assemb um, code, Mr. Waterbury, Pascal, Tony Harming is also, by the way, should also be mentioned here in general because he's contributing a lot, Algol, Peter Flass, XPL, Mr. Edlis, he's a very interesting basic interpreter or compiler written in PL1, and, other, and then people here who help me keep my mainframes running in the cloud, such as 
Mr. Lee again up in Japan, Professor René Ferland, um, Sebastian Wind uh, in Germany, a very interesting gentleman who has his own real mainframe Z9 running as in, in his cellar. And I also want to thank especially the University of Leipzig for giving me access to this mainframe that I'm connected to right now. Thank you so much, University of Leipzig. And then um, we also have corporate sponsor who sponsors the running of the uh, of this mainframes that I make available to the community, the MVS 3.8 and the PM370 mainframes, uh, VChain Inc., a blockchain company, um, as a main sponsor. Then, so these are some just some of the people that I want to thank. There is for sure dozens and dozens more. I'm sorry if I not mentioning you here, but if you do. I'm sure, I'm sure I forget, and again, I ask for, I my apologies for that. But uh, this is an amazing community. All these people have contributed uh, to to a large or small extent to make this a wonderful community. I know that many, many people uh, enjoy spending the free time or part of the free time doing mainframe stuff and uh, retro computing stuff. It's a huge trend uh, these days. And so thank you all. Thank you for being such faithful viewers of this channel and for being such uh, active commenters and uh, and contacting me by email, by by text message, by all kinds of means, by, by uh, comments below the videos. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for being so active in the previous uh, 99 videos and hopefully another 100 to come in the future. So that's it. Um, if you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. Uh, or if you just want to thank these people, press on the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed to the Moshik's mainframe channel yet, then I would urge you to do so now. Thank you for watching and let's look forward to, uh, to video 101 soon. Thank you and goodbye.